welcome everybody to this breakout session sponsored by Joint Operations and BREG. Today we're going to be covering the aspects of unloading bracing and giving you an overview of the biomechanics related to the unloading bracing range and the important factors to consider when looking at them for your patients. A bit of background, um, joint operations, in case you aren't aware, are a company still relatively in their infancy, founded in 2015. We're a joint preservation company focused around how we can preserve all elements um, of, of the joint. We look at allograft, we look at cartilage, alignment and meniscus, as well as a range of non-surgical options. And most recently, we've taken on the Breg portfolio, and that's what we'll be going through today. So who are Breg? Breg are a company founded over 30 years ago in the US. They're actually one of the market leaders in bracing and cold therapy in America. And we're lucky enough to have that full range of products available to us in the UK today. So I'm gonna hand over to Monica, who is one of the education consultants for Breg that's based throughout Europe. And Monica is also a physiotherapist and she works in a really busy practice over in Poland. So over to you, Monica. Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Monica Seibert. I'm a physiotherapist whose great passion for more than 20 years is orthotics. I have been working for Breck as a medical education consultant for the past five years and use their products in my very busy physiotherapy clinic in Poland. Today, I would like to share some information about offloading braces. Why brace? Not everyone believes in OA braces, although there are many studies which confirm their effectiveness and highlight their benefits. Fewer arthritis symptoms, lack of pain, reduction in the use of pain medications, ability to perform daily activities or increase walking distance. All these features are a real hope, especially for patients who for various reasons are not currently suitable for surgical intervention. When OA braces may be ineffective, mostly when they are fitted incorrectly or when the brace choice is wrong. OA braces can work in push or pull technology. Both systems are equally effective. However, the specific features of the affected knee will be a final determinant of the right choice. That's why it is important to know that pushing braces offload the compartment on the opposite side to the hinge and pulling braces offload the compartment on the side where the hinge is located. Hinge in pushing braces always has direct contact with the knee while hinge in a pulling braces may never touch the knee. The bigger offloading force the larger the distance between the knee and hinge will be. On the x-rays, uh, we can see the same knee, but in four different braces. The effectiveness of all four braces were quite similar. However, the comfort level was different and the patient felt most secure in the dual upright brace. The reason of the choice was also ligament instability. All way braces can be static or dynamic. Dynamic braces, video on the right, provide increased force only in the moment of medical need. So in the last 30 degrees of extension. Static braces, which you can see on the video on the left, provide a constant force that stays unchanged no matter on knee angle.
pulling braces are a little bit better for people who do not tolerate any pressure on their knees or for the ones who have significantly valgus knees. Pushing hinge on that type of legs may simply force a different walking gait as a response for a risk of hitting the other knee. OE braces can have one or two uprights, and it is extremely important to choose the correct brace based on patient's needs. For deficient knees with OA and ligament instabilities, or for patients who perform high impact sport activities, dual braces will be always the right choice as they not only offload the affected compartment, but also stabilize the knee in all anatomical planes. And please keep in mind that OA braces can also be dynamic or static. There are some restrictions we need to follow when choosing a brace. The angle of deformity is always crucial when deciding what type of a brace to choose. Patients with varus valgus deformity over 15 to 18 degrees won't be able to wear dual upright braces. Too big pressure on a tibia and a brace tendency to rotate and slide down are the biggest risk in such situations. On the left picture, we can see a patient with varus knees who, because of ligament instabilities, was fitted with dual upright braces. Picture on the right shows the patient who has significant varus deformity and really, really bad instability. Unfortunately, the varus angle uh, in this situation was too big to fit this patient in a dual upright brace. It is always good to see a joint opening on the affected side caused by an OA brace, but it's crucial to remember that uh, it is that lack of pain, not an X-ray is the way we follow. Quite often, it won't be possible to see joint separation on X-ray. What doesn't mean that OA brace is ineffective. A main goal of OA braces is to reduce pressure on one of compartment. This always translates into pain relief. No pain means longer walking distance. This means more daily activities. And this leads to patients and doctors satisfaction. OA braces can be so efficient in reducing pressure that they often support regenerative medicine procedures and present great results in conjunction with hyaluronic acid. Quantum OA brace. This is a brace with uh, scientifically proven effectiveness. The recently published study shows very promising results uh, look at the picture on the right. This is a 3D analysis showing subject varus valgus change without the brace on the left side and with the brace on the right side. After evaluating all 20 subjects in this study while wearing and not wearing the breakaway brace, it was found that all subjects experienced a positive change in joint space in other words, the break OA brace is clearly performing as anticipated, ultimately leading to a decrease in patient pain and an improvement in functionality. As I have mentioned before, we do not need to always see joint separation to achieve good outcomes. As we can see on the x-rays, the correct brace may slightly improve the alignment and significantly reduce the pain, the pain, sorry. Each brace fitter 
in terms to choose the correct brace should take into consideration lots of aspects, knee alignment, doctor's information, x-ray or MRI, activity type of or level, treatment plan, additional knee deficiencies, ankle alignment, skin condition, flexion contractors, and leg shape and proportions. The more information we have, the better conservative treatment we give. As clinicians, we often are asked how many degrees this brace may correct. The point is only osteotomy can correct and the brace task is to offload, not to correct. How strong the offloading force can be? Well, as high as can be tolerated without discomfort. Additionally, the offloading force is a resultant force created by a brace angle and a leg angle. So this force also depends on patient's tolerance on pressure points or strap tension. While fitting a brace, we need to take into consideration a lot of factors, but most importantly, we cannot cause any discomfort or put too much pressure as the patient simply won't wear uncomfortable brace at all. It is quite important to admit that if the knee has flexion contractors, the effectiveness, the effectiveness of an OA brace will be always much lower. So to be sure that the certain type of a brace was a good choice, few goals have to be achieved. The pain is gone or reduced, confidence is improved, patient can walk longer distances, knee feels supported, and activity level increases. If all is checked, then we know that our OA brace work. Summarizing, we need to consider lots of aspects when choosing an OA brace to achieve our goals. Wrong brace application, a wrong brace choice will make the brace ineffective or even can put our patient at risk. And this is very important to remember. Thank you very much for your attention.